As I am recording this, there is a new poll that is from the George Washington University battleground uh, that doesn't look so good for Hillary Clinton. Yet again, it's another poll that shows Hillary Clinton doesn't do that well against Donald Trump. In point of fact, in this poll, she only beats him by 3%, which is within the margin of error of 3.1%. So what does she actually beat him by? So it's 46 to 43%. Again, Clinton, 46, Trump, 43. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, beats him by 53.3 to 38%. And also in these polls, it shows that people still have a very high, unfavorable viewing of Clinton, Cruz, and Trump. Hillary with a 56% unfavorable uh, rating, Ted Cruz at 55%, and Donald Trump at 65%. So again, this is just the latest poll that shows what everybody knows is that, or what everybody except Hillary and Hillary supporters know, and that is that she is not going to be a good opponent for Donald Trump. Uh, in most of these polls, it shows that Donald Trump, actually, if you look at all of them and look at the aggregate, it shows that Donald Trump has actually been gaining each time they do these polls. And that's a very scary thought uh, because that means that come general election time, he's he might have caught up with just like how Bernie Sanders started so far away from Hillary Clinton. I believe it was 60, uh, percent, 60 points or whatever below Hillary Clinton. And now they're virtually tied. So with that, Donald Trump now at a 3% uh, loss which again is in the margin of error which means it's statistically a tie so hillary clinton just tied with donald trump in a poll in a head-to-head -head matchup that that's a scary thought that means if if hillary clinton is the nominee and she's going against donald trump she could lose this think about that think about what that means that means essentially your vote for hillary clinton is a vote for a Donald Trump presidency because she obviously from these head-to-head -head matchups cannot beat him cannot beat him well enough in order to ensure that she gets into the White House some people would like to think that you know she's she's the stronger candidate because she has all the experience and she's been a good politician but her experience shows a lack of good judgment and a lack of good foresight. And I, I think that's being taken into account. And again, also her unfavorable ratings being so high. Um, again, second second to Donald Trump, 65 for uh, Trump and 56 for Hillary. That's, that would be um, the two least liked politicians going head to head in November. That's, that's not how you get people to turn out to vote. That's definitely not it. And it's definitely not Hillary's tactic, which I'm going to talk about here soon. But in order for Hillary Clinton to win, she's going to need to attract Sanders supporters. But she hasn't been doing that. And this poll, it, it's a scary, scary poll. That 3% in the margin of error is 3.1%. That's, that's not good. That is not good. If if that doesn't scare you, I, I don't I don't know what to say. If your whole mission is to elect the person who you think can beat Donald Trump, well, that person is not Hillary Clinton because poll after poll of these matchups show that he is not only gaining on her, but he is now in a statistical tie against her. You know, um, and again, as I'm recording this, that's the latest one. I don't know if there's another uh, new one that maybe it just came out as I'm recording this, but that that's something we need to really start looking at because these head-to-head -head matchups. Sure, last year a head-to-head -head matchup wouldn't matter. Um, January, February, March, even wouldn't have mattered. Um, April is when they start to matter because we're now getting in the stretch the last stretch of the campaigning for the primaries. 
And if in the last stretch of the campaigning of the primaries, Hillary Clinton's not doing so well against Donald Trump, that means come November, that's not really going to change. People are still going to have that unfavorable rating. And in point of fact, it may actually increase for Hillary because we are going to see her flip on a lot of her issues. We're going to see her do her general election pivot. We've already started to see it with Donald Trump with him coming out and saying that, you know, trans people should be able to use the bat in whatever bathroom they want to, which is a pivot, especially for a Republican to, to come out and say that. That's huge. And I agree with a lot of people who are saying I, I think we're giving a lot of a lot of undue credit to Donald Trump for this because he said so much horrible shit that, you know, the first actual somewhat decent thing he says, we give him credit for it. But we're, we've seen that general election pivot already start with Donald Trump. And he's, he's less polished with it. Hillary Clinton is more polished with it. So she'll do it subtly. But we've already started to see it happen a little bit. And we see it with so many different things. Uh, again, the gun thing with New York. Um, with New York to Pennsylvania where she said that she was against guns in New York. And said that Bernie Sanders, she didn't believe that Bernie Sanders was sufficiently on the side of the parents who lost children in the Sandy Hook massacre. Yet in Pennsylvania, she goes out and says, we have to respect the Second Amendment. So we, we see that switch. Uh, Bill is also a good indicator of when we see that switch. He also, we had a video that we did where he goes after Black Lives Matter protesters and essentially had another sister soldier moment where he tried to discredit someone in the case of sister soldier. He actually discredited her and essentially destroyed her career. Um, whereas Black Lives Matter, he tried to discredit them. Uh, Republicans loved it. The Republicans ate it up. Um, but a lot of Black Lives Matter and a lot of people who support Black Lives Matter, they were appalled by it. And that's going to be a huge turnoff for those voters in the general election. Of course, they may still show up and vote for Hillary Clinton, but they're not gonna be satisfied. They're not gonna be happy to do it. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get into those motivations to vote for Hillary Clinton later, but it's not good, guys. 3%, 46 to 43. And that's within the margin of error, 3.1%, which actually, I don't know if it, if they can break it down further and show like 46 point blank percent to 43 point blank percent. But if it's a flat out a 3% difference, that means Donald Trump essentially won because 3.1% margin of error and a three point, a dead flat 3.3 point uh, percent that means Trump won, essentially, because that 3.1 negates that 3.0. And that means Donald Trump has a 0.1% advantage over her. So think about what you're doing when you're going to the polls, guys. And definitely in states coming up, especially California and a lot of other places, make sure you're registering, making, make sure you're getting out there, make sure you pay attention to what's going on, make sure you realize what's happening right now. Donald Trump is essentially tied with Hillary Clinton in these head-to-head -head matchups, and they matter now. This is when they really start to matter because we're getting close to the end of the process. So what we're seeing right now is sort of, and this has continued, especially the unfavorables have continued uh, throughout this, these primaries, and this is going to be firmly set come November. You know, there's not going to be much change that can happen from July to November, you know, except for them trying to pander to more audiences and doing, you know, their pivot to the general election. So Hillary is going to run to the right and Donald Trump is going to run a little more to the left. And we're, I think, at the end of it all, if Hillary Clinton is the nominee for the Democratic side, we are going to see a very horrible horrible situation where Hillary Clinton loses. And I know Barack Obama is going to get out and campaign for her, or if, she, again, if she is the nominee, but 
that's going to turn a lot of Republican voters off because a lot of Republican voters do not like President Obama. Let's just be real about that. A lot of um, really progressive voters are unsatisfied with President Obama. And I, I don't know what she can do to really persuade them. Republicans have a really negative view of Hillary Clinton and essentially the Clintons as a whole. And it's actually becoming a thing to where now a lot of people um, have really negative views of the Clintons as a whole. And it's just, it's not good. It's really not good. And we really need to, you know, think about that going forward and make sure we elect the person who, or nominate the person who is going to be strong enough to take on um, Donald Trump or even Ted Cruz or Kasich because she still loses to John Kasich in these head-to-head -head matchups. And she still comes very close with Ted Cruz and with the way they're positioning themselves in the Republican side to have a brokered convention, we could see either one of them come out of it or we could see Paul Ryan. Who knows? You know, even though Paul Ryan has said he's not going to, you know, run for president, he said he wasn't going to take the Speaker of the House position, but he ended up taking it. So I can't really believe when he says he's not going to do something because he usually does the opposite in the end. Um, and I can say the same for Hillary Clinton. So just just think about that. Again, Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump, 3%. She wins by 3%, and again, the margin of error is 3.1. Bernie Sanders against Donald Trump, uh, I believe it was 53.3 to 38%, so 15.3%. Um, win there. You can't pit steady as you go against a populist message. You, you have to put populist against populist. What Bernie Sanders and what Donald Trump are good at doing is getting the people excited and riled up and, and ready to, to go vote. You can disagree with the methods of Donald Trump. Believe me, I disagree. I think he's a disgusting person. But he's getting the people riled up. He's exciting the base. And that's what you have to do if you want to win. That's what you have to do to make people turn out to vote. You know, you have to. Uh, Hillary Clinton said last night in the town hall that um, she's essentially going to make people come out and vote. You have to make them uh, vote. And you can't make them. You have to inspire them to want to vote. And Hillary Clinton does not inspire a lot of people. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, he inspires people. You know, you look at these rallies he's had. He had huge rallies. And I, I agree, they don't turn into votes, but that also has to do with, you know, where he's at, you know, and how they do their primaries, if they're closed or if they're open. And I, that's something I could talk about later, where um, how I feel about closed primaries. But in New York, they had a super closed primary where you had to be registered to vote. Um, you had to be registered to the party in like October. So a lot of people didn't know about Bernie Sanders in October. I don't think I even um, knew about Bernie Sanders. I might have. But the point is, is that a lot of people didn't know about Bernie Sanders in October. So these closed primaries, they do hurt him in a lot of ways. But New York more so than, you know, some of these ones that are coming up. And... You know, hopefully, hopefully people start to realize that this is what's going on. This is what's happening and that, you know, she's not doing well. And Donald Trump keeps poll after poll. He comes in closer to her or he may there may be an outlier. Maybe he says something, you know, um, really offensive and that jumps him back to a higher number. But more than likely, it's usually close to the, um, the margin of error or maybe just a little bit above the margin of error. And that is not good coming to November. That is not good at all. If we want to avoid um, fascism in this country, or at least possible fascism in this country, then we have to elect the candidate who's inspiring people to vote and who is doing the best in these head-to-head -head matchups. Because again, they are now starting to really matter and starting to really give an accurate portrayal of what could happen in the general election.